Hi everybody, it is November 11, 2017. I'm going to play just a few minutes of this news show. It's a CBS Dallas Fort Worth news. And see if any words, terms, leap out at you and hurt your ears as you're listening. Imagine zipping between every single major Texas city in less than an hour. The company behind the so-called Hyperloop chose Texas among the places to try and make it a reality. Brooke Rogers is live in Dallas with the details. Brooke? Well, Texas is known for having lots of space and, of course, lots of traffic. And it's because of that combination that experts say it would be the perfect place to try out new technology called a Hyperloop. It's high-speed travel like we've never seen it. Electric propulsion pushing passengers and freight to supersonic speeds inside a low-pressure tube. You accelerate, you pick up speed, the pod lifts on magnets, and then this slips through the tube. It's very similar to actually flying in a plane, except, you know, without having to go all the way up in the air and come back down. Stephen DeLong helped submit the Texas Triangle Hyperlink proposal to the Hyperlink One Global Challenge. It was named one of 10 winners this week. The 640-mile corridor would connect Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, and Laredo. With vehicle speeds of up to 700 miles an hour, you could go from Dallas to Houston, for example, in 46 minutes for the price of a bus ticket. We're, we're fleshing out the rest of the Texas Triangle. Um, so that includes the existing efforts for high-speed rail between Dallas and Houston, and then we'll be connecting the rest of the cities to build on that effort to connect the rest of Texas. Now comes the research phase, evaluating commercial viability, identifying a quarter, and brainstorming who would fund it and how. Duong says the technology, already built as a prototype in Nevada, could be a game-changer in Texas easing congestion, reducing its carbon footprint, and creating a global mega region. I think most people and even the public can kind of feel that we're turning a new leaf on transportation innovation. And three other okay, uh, I will link below to everything. So if you want to watch the last 30 seconds of this news segment, click on the link below. Did you hear Texas Triangle? Did you hear mega region? Did you hear global mega region. The Hyperloop, this is the new transportation coming soon to a mega region where you will be living. No more cars. All of us taking these Hyperloop trains to work if we happen to work in a, another city. Though I think the plan is to keep us locked in our public-private mixed-use neighborhoods. And if you have done any research on Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, Vision 2050, America 2050, then you will know what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, most Americans have not. Many of those that we have spoken to will not do the research. So they are still choosing willful ignorance and wowed by all of this uh, technology and these fast trains. Oh, wow, we'll be able to get to actually Washington, D.C., to New York City, a Hyperloop train. That will only take, I think, 24 minutes. I might be wrong, but very, very fast to get from Washington, D.C. to New York City. I'll get back to the Texas Triangle and the mega region in one second, but what is a Hyperloop? The 700 mile per hour subsonic train explained. If you want to know the some of the details in this uh, high speed train system, this is Elon Musk, his, his uh, creation dubbed Hyperloop. It will allow you to get from London to Edinburgh or LA to San Francisco in under 30 minutes. And everybody will go, yeah! Yeah, make it, Musk! He's likened it to a vacuum tube system in a building used to move documents from place to place. Confused? No worries. Here's everything you need to know about the futuristic train 
coming from the founder of Tesla and SpaceX. It's a cross between a Concord, a railgun, and an air hockey table. It is based on the very high-speed transit system proposed in 1972, which combines a magnetic levitation train and a low-pressure transit tube. It evolves some of the original uh, ideas of this high-speed transit system, but it still uses tunnels and pods or capsules to move from place to place. Neat, huh? Hyperloop One reveals plan to connect 35 U.S. cities. Wow. Why only 35 U.S. cities? Could it be that the, these U.S. cities happen to be those cities in the mega regions planned for the United States? I'll show you that in a second. But yes, vision for America strategy. It's all Agenda 2030. Coming at us really fast, Hyperloop's One Vision for America. So as I read this paragraph, whichever part of the United States you're currently in, it's easy to feel like our country's grasp on these ideals has been slipping. We have failing dams, toxic water, airports belonging in a third world country, and collapsing bridges. The European Union now has a larger economy than the United States, and China is leading the world in clean tech. Hard-working Americans often struggle to find jobs, and last year's election exposed a rift in this country that will take years to heal. The American Society of Civil Engineers gave our infrastructure a D+. Plus. That's the 2017 Infrastructure Report Card. We got a D+. Plus. The richest nation in the world got a D+. Plus. How is that even possible? It could only be possible if it was deliberate to reshape the United Nations, uh, the well, I may as well say the United Nations, because we have handed over our sovereignty. We have handed over ourselves to the United Nations. It's so sad to see all of this happening. When I absolutely do believe it could have been stopped, but no. We couldn't wake up Americans. They didn't care. They're mind controlled. They're dumbed down. They're choosing willful ignorance, comfort over everything for most Americans. But it's not just a plan for the United States. Elon Musk and Putin agreed on a $1.5 trillion trans Eurasian hyperloop. Yes, nations will be connected in what could amount to a 21st century New Deal for the world economy, Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin announced yesterday an agreement to spend $1.5 trillion on this hyperloop to connect New York and Moscow by 2035. The plan calls for spending $75 billion a year for the next 20 years. All told, the project will cover 8,000 miles. The route will ultimately connect Russia and China via Mongolia, establish an iron silk road through Turkey, connect Siberia and North America via a new continental bridge or underwater tunnel, and likely significantly improve relations between Western Europe and Russia. Trip times between popular destinations along the route will be measured in minutes and hours rather than days or weeks. This is the New World Order. So, I also want to, um, sticking with the Texas Triangle, I want to thank the subscriber who sent me this video yesterday, as well as 
This Houston Energy Carter District Master Plan. This is the Agenda 2030 plan for Houston. Do you think it's a surprise that Houston was flooded? Not just this year, but last year. I think even three years ago. They get these massive floods annually that destroy an awful lot of people in Houston and the surrounding area. And part of the reason why they create these weather events that are catastrophic to so many Americans, like the California fires, is to move people out of certain areas to destroy their homes, to destroy businesses in the area so that they can redesign the area to its uh, to the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan. The Energy Corridor District is one of the nation's premier employment centers containing the headquarters and regional offices of prominent international energy companies, energy service firms, and many other significant organizations. Comprised of 2,000 acres situated 15 miles west of downtown Houston along I-10, the district is distinguished by its exceptional location within the metropolitan area, a large and growing population of office workers and residents, and adjacency to some of the region's great natural assets, including Buffalo Bayou and the Attucks and Barker Reservoirs. Yes, aren't those great reservoirs? Those reservoirs that they actually deliberately released the waters from to flood the surrounding neighborhoods. They would not have been flooded had they not released the waters. And, you know, my friend in Houston and other people that I've spoken to in Texas, they have said that, wow, yeah, people are coming to Houston for jobs. Well, I'll get back to that in a second. But the master plan provides strategies for the Energy Carter District in cooperation with its private, public, and nonprofit sector partners to build upon these existing assets. So, recommendations of the plan? Address the physical infrastructure needs of the district by creating a more pedestrian and bicycle-friendly place. We even have an Anderson, South Carolina plan to do just that. But it will include the creation of complete streets, implementation of a continuous bicycle network, improvements in the overall quality of the landscape, and establishment of the integrated transit networks, the Hyperloop, created destination environment by promoting the development of several mixed-use centers containing public gathering spaces framed by urban retail uses, restaurants, community facilities, and parks and plazas that will support existing employees and residents, draw visitors from throughout the city, and provide for year-round active programming of civic and festival events. Doesn't it sound great? You won't need your car. If you work further than walking distance, you can take your bicycle. And your city will provide all of your entertainment. It will also establish and enhance a robust parks and open space system anchored by a world-class central park that will be regional destination for recreation, arts, and events while creating enhanced riparian ecology, greater connectivity for pedestrians and bicyclists, better performing stormwater management. Wow. So Houston couldn't have done that before, huh? Yes, but diverse park spaces for residents and employees. Everything will be right at your fingertips. And those public parks, look into it. They are actually 
Well, you know, that uh, public-private partnership, many of the parks that they call public are actually private, owned by corporations. So you don't get to really enjoy freedom. You will have to adhere to the rules of the corporation, whatever the corporation lays out for you. So it's the master plan, these strategies to address placemaking, connectivity, and livability. All right. Um, it really is unfortunate that we can't uh, get through to our fellow Americans to tell them that all of these keywords, connectivity, sustainability, um, the United Nations plan, Agenda 2030, it's not going to be fun. It's to enslave people in particular regions, not just in our country, but all over the world. It is the elite reshaping all countries all over the world for their own pleasure and we get to be their slaves. But this Energy Carter District Master Plan, um, you can, and I'm doing this for my Houston uh, subscribers, here are all of the plans in detail, focus area plans, street designs, uh, you can download the complete report by clicking on the link below. So, this is absolutely 100% globalism through United Nations Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and Vision 2050. This is uh, a very good article. So if you don't know much about the United Nations plan, please read this. But it's interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. How would they build these mega regions, mega cities? The plans are already underway in the form of destroying the American suburbs, the family, the way we purchase and own, own homes and apartments, and by depopulation of rural areas. UN Agenda 21 has morphed into Agenda 2030 and now into Vision 2050, a plan to force 9 billion people to live by the globalist pre prescription of living well and within the planet's resources. Now, they also have a depopulation plan, so they won't need to be moving 9 billion people. In fact, the world's population, I believe, is a lot less than we are being told. I do believe that people are dying at a high rate all over the world. But absolutely in the United States. Do you ever hear anybody who is well anymore? The Vision 2050 report is a consensus piece that was compiled by 29 leading global companies from 14 industries and in is the result of 18 month long combined efforts between CEOs and experts and dialogues with more than 200 companies and external stakeholders in some 20 countries. In simple translation, global companies and CEOs are going to dictate to all of us how we are supposed to live by 2050. No free choice, no Input. Oh, that's right. Yes, you have your um, town councils and your local government that have these uh, meetings with you. Do you want to know why your local government officials do not listen to you at all? Because they are instructed to listen to those who, who are implementing this plan. Now, they may have these meetings, and they may split you up, and they may have their uh, questions, uh, or they may ask you to submit some suggestions, but that is all a deliberate manipulation of Americans to make them feel as if their input is being considered. It's not being considered at all.
If you take a look, once you find out if you're in a mega region, if you do take a look at your communities, you will find that there's an awful lot going on behind the scenes that you don't know, and it is related to Agenda 2030, reshaping of your community. So, here. This is how your city will be transformed into a low-carbon mobility city. You will be stuck in your neighborhood your entire life like a rat in a maze. And your world may encompass a very small radius of travel, but you will be saving the planet from a non-existent climate change Armageddon, a lame threat greatly benefit benefiting the globalist elites who jet in style around the world in their personal gas guzzlers, impervious to air pollution, and jets that are destroying the ozone layer. But they care so much about the planet. God, the lies are magnificent, widespread, going on all over the place. And I mean, you would think that people would just get that, all right, we've been lied to for decades. We're still being lied to. Maybe we should demand the truth. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't be just accepting every lie that we hear from our government officials. When you're comfortable, you don't do anything to change. Nothing. And yeah, you can admit that, oh, government officials, they lie. Well, that's what politicians do. But if nothing is going on in their life, they just go on without doing anything to change. Not themselves, not their communities, nothing. It's, and that is... And that is what is allowing the reshaping of our country now. This is another Hyperloop uh, news from a local news station in, in Houston. But I just want to show you right here. Now get this, all right? Mainstream media is now using terms like global mega regions. Texas Triangle. Mega regions. You would think that Americans would just kind of like, what does that mean, mega region? I've never heard that term. All right, the mega regions, these hyperloop, it's not just in Houston or Texas, the Texas Triangle, but there are plans to install hyperloops in 11 regions. In our country, Massachusetts, you got the Rocky Mountain Hyperloop Consortium, Hyperloop Midwest, Rocky Mountain Hyperloop, Colorado, Missouri, the West Hyperloop, Florida Hyperloop, Nevada, the PNW Hyperloop, and Hyperloop Texas. Isn't it interesting that there is 11? America 2050. I will link below to this website, America 2050, Mega Regions. Oh, wow. And there seem to be, hmm, 11 of them. 11. I thought that there were 10, but apparently there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Wow, what a surprise. 11 mega regions for America 2050, and all people will be, well, these are the UN human settlement zones. That's right. No people in the gray area. Everybody in the mega regions. That's what the United Nations is dictating. So each mega region, you can click on right here. So if you live in areas even close by these mega regions, because they're going to be forcing everybody into these regions. So you can click on uh, the, let's say, oh, how about the Piedmont? 
Atlantic. Did it change? No. My fabulous computer is so fast. Don't you love it? Can't wait for 5G so I can get a faster computer. Did you ever think that they could be making computers really, really slow so everybody just goes, ah, oh, I can't wait till 5G comes to my area? All right, so Piedmont, Atlantic, which is where Anderson, South Carolina is, um, you can find out what the plans are. The Piedmont, Atlantic, the major cities will be Atlanta, Birmingham, Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte. And they will give you information about your particular mega region right here on this site. Okay. Um, housing is at the center of all of these mega regions, what the United Nations Sustainability Goals mean for real estate housing at the center. Yes, you will have housing very close to your employment and all of your needs, the arts, the parks, um, mixed use, mixed use properties, which will have stores on the bottom level apartments on the top level and you will not have to use a car ever because you'll be able to just walk out of your apartment and find all of your shopping needs within walking distance. That's the plan. It sure is. Um, I will also link below to Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. For any of you who have not read this, this is the United Nations Sustainable Development Plan. It is on the United Nations website. And so when you talk to people and they look at you as if, oh God, you're a conspiracy theorist, and they roll your eyes, roll their eyes, and they roll our eyes too, but they roll their eyes and they call us crazy. And here it is. All they would have to do is go to the United Nations website and find it. So, you have to really wonder what happened to the brains of Americans. And it tells you all of their plans and what they plan on doing. Um, I highlighted one paragraph good here. Yes, we recognize the positive contribution of migrants for inclusive growth and sustainable development. We also recognize that international migration is a multidimensional reality of major relevance for the development of countries of origin, transit, and destination, which requires coherent and comprehensive responses. We will cooperate internationally to ensure a safe, orderly and regular migration involving full respect for human rights and the humane treatment of migrants regardless of migration status of refugees and of displaced persons. Such cooperation should also strengthen the resilience of communities hosting refugees, particularly in developing countries. We underline the right of migrants to return to their country of citizenship and recall that states must ensure that their returning nationals are duly received. Orders from the United Nations. Why? Why are we um, suddenly fighting with one another over walls on our borders or open borders? And you have these people coming out and um, calling for open borders because this is a global plan. No more borders. We'll all live in peace and prosperity and, and it'll be a kumbaya world. Everybody will get along. So this is part of the plan and it has been um, really under the orders of the United Nations for European countries to take in refugees, the United States to have uh, a migrant crisis or, well, it's no longer a crisis now. Migrants, well, they get, you know, citizenship just because, well, for whatever reason, they're here. That's it. Handed it, handed to them. 
get rid of our immigration laws, don't enforce them, get sanctuary cities, which to every American, they should be thinking to themselves, how could cities be a sanctuary for illegal immigrants? Oh my God, I said illegal. Oh, what's the PC term? It's undocumented. Well, how could cities provide sanctuary for people who come here illegally? Doesn't that sound a little odd? Cities literally refusing to enforce laws and provide safe spaces for people who come here illegally and Americans can't get that something is a little off with that? I guess not. I guess not. But yes, the implementation, it's a global partnership. corporations, billionaires, all coming together to implement the sustainable development, the plans of the United Nations. And once realized, no country will have any sovereignty. The United Nations will be the one world government And it will be, it will be a, a communist slave state on steroids. Sad, but happening. Here is your Hyperloop. Looks kind of fancy, doesn't it? Wow. Yep. 700 miles per hour. New York City, Washington, D.C., Oh, I think I heard 24 minutes, but the Hyperloop ain't not just for the United States. It's for the world. Europe, North America, South America, Africa, Australia, Asia. Isn't it great? All of these corporations, all of these globalists, all of these multi-billionaires chipping in to redesign the world because they love ordinary people. And they want ordinary people to come out of poverty. Didn't you know? Multi-billionaires. That's how much they love ordinary people. Vision for Europe. Here's a few visions. Glasgow. A hyperloop to Glasgow and Edinburgh. Or Edinburgh to Newcastle, Leeds, Manchester, Liverpool. Or a straight one to Edinburgh right into London. And I think that would be 50 minutes for you. How about Poland? How about Australia? Oh, how about India? How about America? Hyperloop One. We've got, um, sorry, the wrong one. Uh, Hyperloop, U.S. transportation system. Here's our Hyperloop system. And I guess it will be connecting all of these places. But we've got one from Boston to Providence, and that's going to be, well, Boston to Somerset will be five minutes, but Boston to Providence will be, well, it says Fall River to Providence. So add up all of that, and you've got what? Oh, uh, seven and a half. You've got about 10 minutes. Jesus, a little over 10 minutes. That's a fast train. Uh, you got one here. This is the uh, Xi'an. Is that how you pronounce it? Xi'an? 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 Jesus. Dick Cheney. It's Dick Cheney's hometown. All the way down to Houston. Dallas to Houston, 24 minutes. Denver, Dallas, 73 minutes. It'll be fast. But who knows if you're going to be able to travel to these places. Rocky Mountain Hyperloop. Here it has a couple of extensions. Wyoming, Colorado, on down to uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Vail, of course, has to remain. You know, for the elite, that's where they love to ski. 
Kansas City, Columbia, St. Louis, trip times, Kansas City to Columbia will be 12.9 minutes, Columbia to St. Louis, 12 minutes. Got Los Angeles to San Diego, that'll be a 12 minute trip. Chicago, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Florida Hyperloop, Orlando to Miami. And you got your, uh, it, this is beginning to connect the Texas Triangle, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, Laredo. Um, why don't we just go back to what the Texas Triangle, the cities that it comprises, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio. Wow, what a match. Now, it doesn't say Laredo, as they said on this news segment, but uh, it is pretty much a match here. So, um, Reno to Las Vegas, the Pacific Northwest Hyperloop, Seattle, Olympia, Portland, Eugene, Colorado, which I think I just showed you. But yes, these are the mega regions, all in the gray area. We will not have people here. People will only be in these regions, the mega regions, the Northeast mega region, the Great Lakes, the Front Range, Northern California, Cascadia, Southern California, Arizona Sun Carter, Texas Triangle, Gulf Coast, Florida, Piedmont, Atlantic. So it is the redesign of the United States. And it is happening as I speak. Now, how did they do this? How could they possibly move all of these people into these mega regions? Well, you got a depopulation program going on, and I have no doubt that our population is not the 324 million that they claim it is. People are dying at a fast clip. But how else? You reshape the economy. You create jobs in the mega regions. And you have catastrophic uh, weather events that force people into areas because they're hurt economically, financially, by these catastrophic weather events. They may not be able to rebuild their homes due to flooding or fires in Northern California. Uh, they lost cars. The flooding, car insurance doesn't cover flooding. So you get people that can't afford to buy a new car or can't afford to uh, re-renovate their home in a way that <clears throat> they can get permits for, they will get approval from the uh, building inspectors that are enforcing international codes under Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. And these codes are very burdensome. That's what's happening in California with the rebuilding of these fires. Another thing that you do is you force people out of these areas by increasing rents so high that they just can't afford them. So if you want to continue to um, provide for your family, for your children, what do you do? You move to areas that have employment opportunities like the Texas Triangle or the Piedmont Atlantic. Yes, major corporations right here in this area. Come on down. Mom and pop stores gone, but come on down because we've got major corporations. You can get a whole lot of factory work here. And that's, you know, in talking to a lot of people in this area, one, one guy had moved his family down from Maine, I believe, or Massachusetts, down to Anderson, South Carolina. Why? Because 
that was the only place that he could find work. Work that would sustain his family. And I've never seen a more depressed man. He, his family did not want to move, but they had no choice. And that's what you do. You create these devastating weather events, you create jobs in the mega regions, you reshape the economy, and then you create a hyperloop system in the mega regions. Funny how the hyperloop train systems are all being developed in the mega regions of the United States. I think the Piedmont Atlantic folk are going to have to walk because I couldn't find a hyperloop, a hyperloop for them. So, yeah, can you believe that you could actually send somebody a two-minute video and suddenly, just from hearing mega region, global mega region, and, and the cities for this hyper loop, the Texas Triangle, it all meets so beautifully. It just fits so beautifully in the United Nations plan for the United States. All links are below.